common complications of pregnancy. High blood pressure. High blood pressure, also called hypertension, occurs when arteries carrying blood from the heart to the body organs are narrow. This causes pressure to increase the arteries. In pregnancy, this can make it hard for blood to reach the placenta, which provides nutrients and oxygen to the fetus. Reduced blood flow can slow the growth of the fetus and place the mother at a greater risk of preterm labor and preeclampsia. Women who have high blood pressure before they get pregnant will continue to have to monitor and control it with medications, if necessary, throughout their pregnancy. High blood pressure that develops in pregnancy is called gestational hypertension. Typically, gestational hypertension occurs during the second half of pregnancy and goes away after delivery. Next is gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes occurs when a woman who didn't have diabetes before pregnancy develops the condition during pregnancy. To get the glucose out of your blood and into the cells of your body, your pancreas makes a hormone called insulin. In gestational diabetes, hormonal changes from pregnancy cause the body to either not make enough insulin or not use it normally. Instead, the glucose builds up in your blood causing diabetes, otherwise known as high blood sugar. Managing gestational diabetes by following a treatment plan outlined by a healthcare provider is the best way to reduce or prevent problems associated with high blood sugar during pregnancy. If not controlled, it can lead to high blood pressure from preeclampsia and having a large infant which increases the risk for cesarean delivery. Infections Infections including some sexually transmitted in infections like STIs may occur during pregnancy and or delivery and may lead to complications for the pregnant woman, the pregnancy and the baby after delivery. Some infections can pass from mother to infant during delivery when the infant passes through the birth canal. Other infections can infect a fetus during the pregnancy. Many of these infections can be prevented or treated with appropriate pre-pregnancy, prenatal and postpartum follow-up care. Some infections in pregnancy can cause or contribute to pregnancy loss or miscarriage, ectopic pregnancy when the embryo implants outside of the uterus, usually in a fallopian tube, preterm labor and delivery, low birth weight, stillbirth at or after 20 weeks of pregnancy, birth defects including blindness, deafness, bone deformities and intellectual disability, illness in the newborn period, first month of life or newborn death. Preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is a serious medical condition that can lead to preterm delivery and death. Its cause is unknown, but some women are at an increased risk. The risk factors include first pregnancies, preeclampsia in a previous pregnancy, existing conditions such as high blood pressure, diabetes, kidney disease, and systematic lupus erythematosus. Being 35 years of age or older, carrying two or more fetuses, or obesity. Preterm labor. Preterm labor is a labor that begins before 37 weeks of pregnancy. Any infant born before 37 weeks is at an increased risk of health problems, in most cases because organs such as lungs and brain finish their development in the final weeks before a full-term delivery of 39 to 40 weeks. Certain conditions increase the risk of preterm labor, including infections, developing a shortened cervix or previous preterm birth. Depression and anxiety. Research shows that many of the women reported frequent symptoms of depression after childbirth and that anxiety co-occurs in depressed pregnant and postpartum women making pregnancy-related depression and anxiety among the more common pregnancy complications. These medical conditions can have significant effects on the health of the mother and her child. But the good news is that these are treatable medical conditions. Pregnancy loss or miscarriage. 
Miscarriage is the term used to describe a pregnancy loss from natural causes before 20 weeks. Signs can include vaginal spotting or bleeding, cramping or fluid or tissue passing from the vagina. However, bleeding from the vagina does not mean that a miscarriage will happen or is happening. Women experiencing this sign at any point in their pregnancy should contact their health care provider. Stillbirth The loss of pregnancy after the 20th week of pregnancy is called a stillbirth. In approximately half of all the reported cases, healthcare providers can find no cause for the loss. However, health conditions that can contribute to stillbirth include chromosomal abnormalities, placental problems, poor fetal growth, chronic health issues of the mother, and infection. Severe persistent nausea and omitting. Although having some nausea and omitting is normal during pregnancy, particularly in the first trimester, some women experience more severe symptoms that last into the third semester. Also, one of the other major issues at the pregnancy is iron deficiency anemia. Pregnant women need more iron than normal for the increased amount of blood they produce during pregnancy. Iron deficiency anemia, when the body doesn't have enough iron, is somewhat common during pregnancy and is associated with preterm birth and low birth weight.